Today we're going to look at adding your chart of accounts into Flockbase. To get to the chart of accounts from the dashboard, go to Administrative, Settings, Financial, Accounts. Your chart of accounts can be seen and edited here, not from the Accounting tab, since edits to your chart of accounts are not part of regular accounting practices. Once here, you can see the essential elements of accounts. First is the name. No two account names can be the same, even between departments. So please be as descriptive as is necessary for each account. Next is the account type. To get started with accounting, you need at least one cash or bank type account, which will have a register for recording checks and deposits. You will also need to have income and expense accounts to account for money coming into and going out of your bank account. Third, we have the number column. Accounts will be sorted on this page and on the balance sheet in numerical order. There is not a universal standard for account numbers, but conventional systems might number all income accounts in the 4,000s and expenses in the 5,000s, for example, as seen here. The fourth column is for the associated fund. For more information on setting up funds, check out the training video on funds. For now, just know that only income and expense accounts will be connected to funds, not any assets, liabilities, or cash or bank accounts. The fifth column is for the department. Departments are typically groupings of expense accounts, such as personnel or administrative departments. The sixth column is for the 1099 code. This is only for expense accounts, and it tells Flockbase where to put funds that go through that account on a 1099. For non-employee compensation, the expense account you use for an independent contractor must have box 7, which is non-employee compensation, selected. And you have to set that contractor up as a payee who receives a 1099. For more on setting up a payee, check out the payees video. Lastly, there is a gear button to select a cash bank account to be connected to integrated online payments if you have set that up as a member of the plus or higher tiers. And there is an X button to delete any account that does not have a transaction history. Remember, any account that has been used for transactions cannot be deleted as this would cause an issue with past records. As a last note, you will see an account named Funds Awaiting Deposit. It cannot be edited except for its number. This is because Funds Awaiting Deposit handles all contributions that have been received and not yet added to a deposit. It works independently so you don't need to worry about it. That's how you set up and manage your chart of accounts. As always, I hope God continues to bless your ministry, and if you have any questions, we're available to help.